Welcome to personal training tip of the week. Today we're going to be looking at a front squat and its different variations. And just to portray the difference between a barbell back squat and a front squat, as you can see from the two illustrations here, with the back squat there's much more flexion or a forward lean and the bar is directly placed on the back or the upper part of your neck. With regards to the front squat, as you can clearly see, there's less flexion or less bending forward of the trunk and the weight is to the front. So what we're going to do with the students in class today is show you several variations that is, you can apply in case you cannot hold a bar because you don't have the extensibility of your shoulder and the elbow and your wrist. We can use the dumbbell or we can use a kettlebell or we can use a form of a ball. Okay, so we're going to migrate to this area over here. Our first variation is where we're using a barbell. Okay, so we have a couple of straps here. Historically, these are used for deadlifts and things of that particular nature. But we're going to use it for the purposes of our client here, not having shoulder flexibility and extensibility. So this is going to aid him doing a front squat. What indeed he's going to do is step forward and hold those upright like so. Place this on the top part of the shoulders where it's comfortable. Make sure it doesn't dissect the carotid artery because that will mean your client will pass out. So make sure you're comfortable. And from there we're going to descend into a front squat to whatever range of motion is attainable by your client. Preferably your thighs parallel to the ground. He will breathe out on the exertion phase up and breathe in on the down phase. And in the interim, he will keep this ideally parallel so the weight doesn't roll forward. That's one variation. Thank you, young man. Another modification on this exercise is where we're going to do a typical catch position in a clean. So this one's going to be like this. So my client is going to have his or her barbell in the fingers or the hand. The elbows again, it's going to ideally be up and the humerus is going to be parallel to the ground and we're going to descend in this position here. So that's the second alternative if you have the flexibility and extensibility to do so. You can clearly see that the chin is parallel to the ground. There's no hyperextension of the neck, so he's not looking up. And again, you're breathing out on the exertion phase, which is the hardest part. So breathe out on the way up, breathe in on the way down, ensuring your ankles, knees and hips are kept in a straight alignment and significantly engaging the intrinsic core muscles, so there's no deviation here. As you come up, I just want you to push through to fully extend the hip. Great. And one more repetition. Excellent. So we're going to rack the bar, and this is another way of actually holding the bar for a front squat. And this time, we're going to do a crossover technique right here. Some people will find this a comfortable option also. So these are all variations. Variations of a front squat, different holes to the front squat. And again, same principle supply. Okay? It comes down to a matter of comfort. If you find that you're dealing with a female or a man who's highly muscled in the upper body, the shoulders, and in the, the chest area, they'll find it very, very difficult. Also with big biceps, find it very, very difficult to catch the bar. So these may pr provide them with a perfect alternative. Thank you very much, young man. Now, in addition to using the barbell, because in the current era, we're training at home and we're using much more portable equipment. So we're going to make our way down here. Now, what we have is a kettlebell. So in this case here, Melinda is going to show you three different variations of how to hold a kettlebell. If you have a shoulder injury, you might have a preference of one over the other. So the first one we're going to do is a typical goblet squat situation. Okay, this is where the hands are held on the kettlebell like such, and she's going to perform two repetitions like so. Okay, again, this is front loaded. So it is much more indirect loading as opposed to a barbell back squat, which is directly on the vertebral column. The next option is also one for comfort, where you get your fingers and thumbs through right here. Again, keeping the bar, in this case the kettlebell, in close proximity to the body. So you want to work as one with the implement. Okay, and the next option, there's three options. The third option, oops, there you go, is like so. Okay, like you're holding a purse, and away you go. So those are the three options of the cat well. And again, it serves the quadriceps and the gluteus maximus very well. Those are the primary muscles used in a squat exercise. And then if we can, we're just going to have that slam ball here. We're going to move the slam ball down. 
And we're gonna utilize this. If you have a slam ball at home, this comes in very, very handy because the same principles apply. Referred to often as a carry squat, okay? Or a zercher squat, irrespective of which terms you wanna use. Again, it's a great uh, indirect loading front squat. Okay, so I hope you uh, enjoy those personal training tips of the week. We'll see you again soon. All right, thanks for visiting MPTI Florida. I'm Pat Sherman. Just wanted to let you guys know to please follow us, like us, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to try to do a really good job this year and uh, give you as much information as possible on the fitness industry, health and wellness. Uh, give us a call, text 407-772-0057. That's Pat Sherman, 407-772-0057.